Acts chapter 22, Paul has been told not to go to Jerusalem. He disobeys God. He's bound in chains, arrested from the Jews by the Roman government, which the Roman government did not interfere. He'd be dead. Men, brethren, and fathers. This is Paul. He's been given license to speak. So he's speaking to men, Gentiles, brethren, Jewish, and fathers. Hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, that's, that's in parentheses, that's an important note. I am verily a man which am a Jew. Paul is Jewish. Born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city, Jerusalem, at the feet of Gamaliel, which was a fine teacher, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, uh, Moses, and was zealous towards God, as ye all are this day. Now look, he doesn't put them down. He says, you guys are doing right. You love God, so did I. I was persecuting Christians, he's going to tell them. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. And the law prescribed that anybody who would teach a false god would have been put to death, cast out, according to the law. That was proper. Problem is, Jesus Christ is God. And the Christians are following God. As also the high priest does bear me witness, and we read that today as a family in Acts 9. Imagine how God puts everything together in this family. He's telling us, he listen, go to the high priest. He will testify that Hey, I went to him. I'm going to bring these Christians to you, and you can prison them. You can do whatever you want. I'll go get them. Just give me the letter. And all the estate of the elders, for whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Acts chapter 9. I'm going to go get them. I'm going to bring them to Jerusalem, and the Jewish people will punish them. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. Now Paul is going to tell his testimony, I think, two or three times in the book of Acts. And one other time I believe in his epistle. It is perfectly proper to tell people how you got saved. This is what Paul's doing. Matter of fact, you should at least often, the opportunity comes, Tell someone what happened to you. And I fell onto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Matches Acts 9. And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? I, mean, I thought you were great in the law. I thought you were a great zeal. I thought you were a great Jewish person. You didn't know who the Lord was? Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Well, that's a very bold statement. Because he's declaring Jesus Christ is Jehovah. Talking to Jews. The only God the Jews have is Jehovah. There's no other God. And when he proclaims Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. I said, what will I, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise and go to Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. When I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came to Damascus. Paul's just telling his testimony. And when Ananias, a devout man, uh, Acts chapter 9 said he was a disciple. Disciple, 
the vote. According to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me. So you see with Ananias, he's saved early in Acts 9, before Paul gets any revelation, it's still based upon the law. Came to me, stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. The same hour I looked up upon him. And, and he said, The Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, has chosen thee that thou should know his will and see the just one and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be a witness unto all men, Jew or Gentile, save the loss of what thou hast seen and heard and now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sin that's not church that's in acts 238 there's no what must you do to be saved believe in the lord jesus christ get baptized wash away thy sins calling on the name of the lord that's kind of funny because just before Paul's conversion here in Acts chapter 9, you got an Ethiopian. And he says, what hinders me to be baptized? And, and Philip lays on him, listen, you got to believe. Okay, I believe Jesus Christ. And then he baptizes him. So you see, you got a dispensation, you got a doctrine in Acts. It's, it's flip-flop because the period in time of what's going on. One man has to believe on Jesus. One man, he's got to be baptized and wash away his sins. Well, in today's church age, when you go with the Pauline epistles of what the church should be, well, you got to look at Acts 22 and say, well, with Acts chapter 9, Paul was not saved because he didn't get saved by his own epistles that he hasn't written yet. Got it? See, we have the complete 66 books set right here in our laps that we can read and study. But when you get through Jesus Christ, the, the, the apostles living and breathing and going about, there is no written sure word. The Gentiles in Acts chapter 9 are not being saved. The Jews are being witnessed to. They're getting saved. They're following the customs of the law because they haven't been told otherwise. And then when we came across the <clears throat> chapter 21, there are still Jews in Jerusalem are keeping the law, but not for salvation, just for character. And James says that in his book, chapter 3 or 4, forget which one it is, that listen, you're saved, but you know what? You've got to have works to prove your salvation. You've got to have works so you can witness to other people. Your works will prove your salvation. It's not your salvation, but it will show you who you are, and it will build a character of what you are. And they that were with me so uh, wait, where were we? 17. 17. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. There was something we haven't read. And I saw him, God, saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. God does not want Paul in Jerusalem. That is not his ground. And Paul needs to learn, many people need to learn, where you grew up, that's not where you're going to be, most likely. You know one of the places that Jesus had a failed ministry was his own hometown. When you get done preaching in Jerusalem, Samaria, then you got to go in the outer parts of the world. Then the Lord's got to send you somewhere else to do the work. And I said, Lord, they know that I am prison and beat in every synagogue, them that believe on thee. 
And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consented unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew. I was holding their coats while they were doing it. This is Paul's testimony. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence into the Gentiles. Well, that's kind of interesting for a full-blown Jew that, that honored God and loved the law and all that. Are you going to send me to them? And they gave him audience unto this word. And they lifted up their voice and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. They didn't like his testimony. And everything that you read, could you see that Paul told the truth? And yet they still want to kill him. So be advised when you tell your personal testimony, it's not going. To, it's not going to create conversions. People make. People have called me a liar when I told my personal testimony. I'm serious. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in there, man, they're just making a ruckus. The chief captain commanded him to be brought into this castle. Remember, they're on the stairs of the castle. Let's get Paul out of here. This is the mercy and grace of God. I want you in Rome. I ought to have you killed right now, Paul. This is the second time at this scene that the Jews had opportunity to kill him in God's grace and mercy. You know, I got to send Gentiles who I want you to go to. I got to send the Romans who I, who I want you to go there. To protect you. Or else, Paul, I could just let the Jews kill you and your ministry's done. There's still some books of, 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 the, of the Bible that are missing by Paul that he hasn't written yet. What would be not in our Bible if God didn't have mercy and grace to Paul? Paul could have died 60 AD. Did he not do what God told him not to do? He did. And there are people out there that, and listen, I fell on this. I don't remember who taught it or anything like that, but you know, I had the fear. If I was going to sin, God was going to send lightning down. If I didn't, you now listen, I tied. I bubbed the tide. But there was a time in my life, I didn't give that tithe. You know, God was going to destroy my house. He's going to send. Paul is in rebellion against God right now, and you know what? He's been spared. He's going to go where God wanted him to do, but it's going to be some time now. The only thing that Paul's going to get is wasted time. But to say that God's going to kill you once you disobey him is not true. And, you know, if you get in the Old Testament, as we went through the law, as we went through the Bible and study, you say, well, didn't you say sometimes well, God would put you on the shelf? Yeah, if you continue to reject, continue to reject, continue to reject, you just will flat right not listen to God. Yeah, God will put you on that shelf and he won't use you. Paul is going to have a change of heart. We know because he'll end up the room. But if he remains steadfast, I'm going to stay in Jerusalem. I don't care what you say. I'll take the punishment and all that. Paul will not go nowhere. So they're going to bring him into the castle and bed and bade that he should be examined by scourging. They're going to whip him. They're going to whip him to find out if he's telling the truth. How much punishment can he take to realize is this man? Now, I have told my testimony, but I have never been whipped because of my testimony. That he might know whether they cried so against him. They want to see if he's going to confess any crimes. Paul has been stoned. He's been removed out of the city in a basket. He's been almost brutally beat up in chapter 21. Now he's being whipped again. And as they bound him with thongs. Now, here's an interesting word. 
as a Christian, do not do a search on T-H-O-N-G, thong, as an image search in your computer because you'll get disgusting things. And yet I want to show you that the English language has degraded. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. It's not evoluting. It's deluding. Because a thong here, in case you do know what a thong is, they bound them with a thong, you probably think, ooh, you know, ha, ha, ha. A thong is a leather strap to fasten. They are going to use a piece of leather, leather to bound Paul down so he can't move. Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? They're bound in him. He turns to him and says, listen, hey, I'm a Roman. I'm not guilty. Can you do this? And when the centurion heard, notice the centurion, they're good people in the Bible, heard that he went and told the chief captain, say, take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Uh-oh, we're going to get into some trouble here. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Paul, tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, yea. So Paul is a Roman Jew. He is a Jew that was born in a Roman province. And the chief captain answers him, with a great sum of time obtained I this freedom. Citizenship by money. This chief captain had to pay a price for his freedom under the Roman government. He was not born in Rome. Roman, the, the whole Roman. And Paul said, But I was born free. And it says here for note a father who had obtained citizenship, he was Roman born. Paul is more of a Roman citizen than the chief captain who's in charge of the army here. And the Roman law suggested by here, you can't do this to a Roman, and you definitely can't do it to a Roman who is not guilty. Well, it shows you that Jesus Christ was truly Jewish, wasn't he? Because what ruler did Jesus stand before as Pontius Pilate? Rome. They beat Jesus, didn't they? Well, if Jesus was a Gentile, he'd be able to turn to him and say, hey, listen. I'm one of you guys. And, I, and you said three times, I'm, I'm, I'm not guilty. I'm innocent. No fault. So Jesus Christ was not of the Roman government. He was Jewish. Straightway, they departed from him, which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid that he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. They broke in the law doing what they'd done to Paul. Now, tomorrow, because, which would be tomorrow, because he would have known the certainty whereof he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and, command, and commanded the chief priests and all their counsel to appear and brought that Paul down and set him before them. Now Paul is going to be before trial. All this time is wasted. Paul could be on a boat right now, on his way to Rome, but he's got to spend it in courtroom. He's got to spend it on stairs. He's got to have his hands bound. He's got to be, be He didn't need to be beaten. He didn't need to be almost killed by a mob. Paul is reaping, disobeying God. And if Paul, the greatest Christian that we can find in the Bible if God beats him and God wastes his time with him because of not obeying the word of God 
what Christians do we think we are if we do something wrong to disobey God and God punishes us? Let's go even back further in the Bible. Let's go back to the perfect man. Let's go back to Adam. What had Adam ever done in his lifetime? Absolutely nothing. God said, don't eat that fruit. He ate the fruit. And God said, okay, you're going to get sweat. You're going to get tears. Your wife is going to have painful childbearing. She's going to do it in tears. She's going to be, uh, you're going to be her head. You're going to work the ground with a sweat and you're going to die. And Christians think, well, if we go against God, you know, God's just going to forgive us and lovey dovey, give us a little kiss on the boo boo and send us off to go back out and do more sin. Impossible. What we learn from this chapter here, realize you better do what God tells you to do. And if you don't, there are consequences. And with Paul, there's going to be wasted time. I know that personally. I know wasted time. I don't know what the date. I don't know. Just trying to think roughly. I know there was a time that God told me, He says, I want you to go to Florida. I want you to go to Pacific School. That's where I want you to go. I'm not going to get placed or anything. And I told God right out, I said, No, I'm not going. I don't want to tell you the stupid reason. I'm not going. And I'll tell you, many wasted. It wasn't family. My wife was willing, let's go. My own stupidity. Told the Lord, no. I don't know how many years. I don't know how many wasted time. In that time, you know, I witnessed to many people. I tried to start a failed church. God had to use deceiving to get me where I am now in Florida, where he wanted me. Be careful when you tell God no. Because guess what? If you get your heart right, he'll say yes. And I look back, I don't know how many years it's been. What, what would have happened if I were gone when God told me to go? Where would I be today? I have no idea. But I am now not completely in the will of God because I told him no. Paul is going to be not completely in the will of God because he told God no. Now God's going to use him. But the full potential is gone. And if God has told you to do something, God's told you to go somewhere. I'm telling you by my own life experience, go. Don't tell God no. And if God has told you not to go somewhere, not to do something, then my personal experience is to tell you, don't do it. Study up on Acts chapter 20, 21, 22. That's all I can say. That's, that's the warning. I've lived that warning, and I've been disobedient. 